Did you know that Earth is getting lighter every day? Quite an intriguing concept, isn't it? It's a little known fact, but our planet is indeed shedding mass, and it's happening steadily year after year. Let's take a closer look at the numbers. Every year, our planet gains around 40,000 tonnes of weight from space dust that settles on its surface. Additionally, global temperatures are rising, and this causes Earth to gain about 160 tonnes of mass. So, you might be wondering if the Earth is gaining mass, how is it getting lighter? Well, despite these additions, our planet is losing mass at a greater rate. Each year, Earth loses an estimated 50,000 tonnes of mass. Now, 50,000 tonnes might sound like a lot, but when you consider the Earth's total mass, it's actually a decrease of just a tiny fraction. However, the continual loss of mass over thousands or millions of years could have significant consequences. This loss of mass isn't just an interesting scientific fact. It's a topic of concern that has implications for our understanding of the Earth and its future. It affects everything from the stability of our planet's orbits to the resources available for our technological advancement. So how exactly is our planet shedding weight? Let's delve into the main factors. In the following scenes, we'll explore how energy gain and loss, the escape of gases, and the impact of rockets and satellites contribute to this fascinating phenomenon. Stay tuned as we unravel the mystery behind a lighter Earth. One factor contributing to Earth's mass loss is the energy added to our system. It may sound a bit abstract, but let's think about it. We're constantly bathed in light and heat from the sun, right? And that's not just light and heat, it's energy. According to Einstein's famous equation, E equals Mekley squared, energy and mass are interchangeable. So when Earth absorbs energy, it gains a little mass. Yes, you heard it right. Our planet gets a tiny bit heavier every time it basks in the sun's rays. But what about other celestial bodies? The moon, stars, planets, they all emit energy too, don't they? Well, yes, they do. However, the amount of energy we gain from these sources is minuscule compared to the sun. The sun is, after all, our primary source of energy. But remember, every little bit counts. Now, let's flip the coin. Earth is not just gaining energy, it's also losing it. How so? Well, our planet has a hot, molten core that is constantly radiating heat. This heat is energy, and as it escapes into space, it takes a little mass with it. Imagine Earth as a giant glowing ball, slowly radiating away its energy. This process is continuous and relentless, and it contributes to our planet's gradual mass loss. However, the amount of mass we lose this way is very small. So small, in fact, that it's almost negligible. But over billions of years, these tiny losses add up. So we've got a bit of a tug of war going on here. On one side, energy from the sun and other celestial bodies is adding to Earth's mass. On the other, the Earth is losing energy, and hence mass from its core. It's a fascinating dance of gain and loss, one that is constantly shaping our planet. Another culprit in Earth's mass loss is the escape of hydrogen and helium into space. Yes, you heard it right. These light gases, which form a significant part of our planet's atmosphere, are slowly and steadily drifting away into the void of space. You might wonder how this is possible. The answer lies in the very nature of these gases. Hydrogen and helium, being the lightest elements in the periodic table, have a knack for reaching high altitudes. At such heights, the gravitational pull of our planet is less effective, and these gases find themselves at the mercy of solar winds. These solar winds, streams of charged particles emitted by the sun, carry away these light gases, resulting in a slow but steady loss of Earth's mass. Now hydrogen is abundant, but the story is different for helium. This noble gas is a scarce resource on Earth, and it's not just for filling up your party balloons. Helium plays a crucial role in various technological applications. It's used in MRI scanners, in the manufacture of fiber optic cables, and even in cooling down the Large Hadron Collider. But here's the catch. Once helium escapes into space, it's gone forever. We cannot recapture it or produce it artificially in significant amounts. This is why the loss of helium is a growing concern. As we continue to consume this precious resource, we must also grapple with the reality that we are steadily losing it into the vastness of space. And it's not just natural factors at play here. Yes, the escape of these gases is a natural phenomenon, but human activities are exacerbating the situation. Yet, there's another human-made factor that contributes to this phenomenon. Stay tuned as we unravel this intriguing element in the next segment. 
Human activity, specifically the launching of rockets and satellites, also contributes to Earth's mass loss. Imagine this. We build a rocket or a satellite using materials mined and manufactured right here on Earth. We then launch these objects into space, their destination ranging from the Moon to Mars and even further into the cosmos. The materials that comprise these rockets and satellites become part of a grand journey, a testament to human ingenuity and our thirst for discovery. However, there's a catch. These materials, once they leave our atmosphere, do not return. They might break apart, burn up, or simply float around as space debris, but they do not come back to Earth. This means that every rocket launch, every satellite that we send into the abyss, contributes to a small but significant loss of Earth's mass. Think about it. Over the years, we've launched thousands of rockets and satellites. The combined weight of these space-bound objects amounts to millions of pounds. That's a lot of mass to simply wave goodbye to, isn't it? Of course, compared to the total mass of the Earth, these losses are minuscule. But they are losses nonetheless, and they add up over time. Each launch, each exploration mission, each satellite peels away a little bit more of our planet's mass. Furthermore, it's not just about the mass that we're losing. It's also about the resources, the metals, the fuel, the components. These are all finite, and every time we send them into space, we're using up a tiny fraction of the Earth's total resource pool. So, while our exploration of space is undoubtedly a remarkable achievement, it comes with its own set of consequences. As we continue to reach for the stars, we must also take into account the impact of our actions on our home planet. So what does all this mean for our planet? While the loss of 50,000 tonnes annually might sound alarming, it's important to put it into perspective. Let's revisit the key points we've covered. Earth is losing mass due to a variety of factors. Energy added to our system, rockets and satellites returning to Earth, the core of our planet losing energy, and the escape of hydrogen and helium gases into space. However, it's also gaining mass, albeit slower, through space dust and rising global temperatures. Now let's put this into context. 50,000 tonnes may seem like a massive number, but when we compare it to Earth's total mass, it's actually minuscule. Imagine a football stadium filled to the brim with sand. Now compare that to all the beaches, deserts and sandboxes in the world. That's the kind of scale we're talking about here.